today is Tawid and I'd just like to invite you guys to praise and worship with us and I'd like to start with a word of prayer. Thank you Lord for this day, thank you for strength, for, for peace, for faith and for grace Lord. So I pray that Lord I will begin our, our, our praise and worship that you may begin with us and that Lord your presence may be a midst of us. In Jesus name I pray. Ili tupate 
by his grace is a gift to the redemption that is in, in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just in justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. So as we continue singing this song, I'd like you to uh, join us uh, in uh, concentrating on the grace that was shown by Jesus Christ when he died and it was by grace that we are all free and are able to move in his presence and come before him. Yeah. 
verse 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. As even we sing this song, <coughs> let's declare that there is hope in everything, hope in the promise that God made to us.
you father and we thank you lord and we just thank you father for your hope that's in you god father that's why we keep on jesus exalting your holy name father your high to be lifted up oh god jesus we worship you we thank you lord you're our hiding places so oh god you're our refuge oh god we look at you unto the mountain oh god and know we can see that our our help comes from you oh god Father, when we are troubled, oh God, when the enemy is trying to attack us, oh God, Father, we thank you that in you we find our refuge, oh God.
things that we had before your presence, O oh God. Jesus, we worship you and we magnify your name, O oh God. Father, thank you for your presence. Thank you, Jesus, for, for the strength that you've given us to us, O oh God. We worship you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning, GCCM family and those uh, watching us online. We are glad that today you are able to join us for our service. We thank God that uh, the week has been good and you have joined us today. And I trust that uh, God has been faithful despite the challenges that we are all going through, especially with the pandemic that is going on, the COVID uh, situation. Everyone is affected or infected in one way or another. But nonetheless, we know we serve a mighty God, and our God is bigger and greater than this pandemic. Uh, the only challenge we have at the moment is we have magnified this um, pandemic to seem bigger than our God. Let us not forget that our God is the same God who parted the Red Sea, and we thank God for that. Today, I'd like us to go straight to what we'll be looking at uh, in terms of uh, what God has laid uh, on my heart today. I'd like us to uh, just uh, delve into the situation of fear, pain, and suffering. That is what I'd like uh, just to capture in a few minutes and see how we can go about this. And um, right at this particular time where we are at, everyone is going through the same situation doesn't matter which part of the world they are in. They have to address this issue, whether they like it or not. And it has brought about fear. It has brought about pain and suffering. Maybe just to give you a scenario. Uh, over this Easter weekend, we lost two relatives uh, in a span of two days. Uh, on Good Friday, we lost uh, a cousin. And uh, on Easter Monday, um, we lost uh, a sister to the cousin. So one family has been hit twice and uh, there's been so much pain and suffering and people are wondering and asking, what is all this about? Um, do we have, is God there? Is he listening? Is he seeing the situation that we are in? But you know what? God is not surprised at what is happening. God is not asleep at what is happening. The pain, the suffering that you're going through, our God knows it very well. He's so much aware of what is happening. In fact, he's surprised that you're surprised at what is going on. But you know what? We need to keep our trust and hope in the Almighty God. So, let us look at um, a scripture that uh, will probably help guide us in the course of uh, this and more others as we move along. Let's uh, look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 to 4. And it says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. It's a bit of a challenge trying to comfort others while you yourself, you need that comfort. However, with what is going on, we need to stand in that position of comfort to be able to comfort others. We are in a season where there's so much pain going on, um, so much fear, so much suffering, and we do not know where to turn to. But as the word of God says, I will lift, lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. When you are all beaten and uh, battered and there's nowhere else to turn to, God is your turn to person. Turn to him and look up to him and he will answer you. You may not feel it right now. You are not able to give that which uh, you want God to do for you. But God is so much aware, he's so much understanding, 
he so much feels what you're experiencing. The only thing is we need to allow him to do his work. Probably some of you are wondering, what is pain or what is fear? What are we talking about? Well, pain is that unpleasant uh, feeling that we have and we do not know how to go about it. And it's brought about by various factors uh, in our lives. More so the life experiences or the events that we go through in life. But that doesn't stop God from being who he needs to be in regards to what we are feeling or the emotions we are going through. And what is fear? Fear is an unpleasant emotion that is brought about by danger or evil or other circumstances um, associated with future or the past. The future will bring about anxiety. You're fearful because you don't know what to expect or what will happen. Um, the past is events that took place and you are worried what is the outcome because some of the things we fear as a result of the events that took place in the past is punishment. We fear that. But our God is a great God. We serve a great God whose desire is not to punish us, but he wants us to come to him and he wants to show us mercy. I remember there was a time we were just sharing uh, in our devotions and uh, it was from the book of Mika. And it reminds me what the Lord was saying. He delights in mercy. The Lord desires so much to show you mercy. So let's hang in there and know that he wants to show us mercy in regards to what we're experiencing or going through. Now, most of the times we tell God, use me, Lord, as I am. You know what that means? You have given God a blank check. And we are open to allow God to use as, to use as in any way or any circumstance. God will use the good and he will also use the bad situations in our lives. But I want us to know this. God does not bring as the bad that we go through or experience. That is not God's doing. However, God allows that so that we can grow and develop in our lives. But his intention is never for us to go through that. But he has a place for that. It will build us. And as we read in our previous um, uh, scripture, it is so that when we are once comforted, we are able to get to that position of being comfort to others. We become a pillar to others because we understand what they are going through. We are able to uplift them and stand with them together in prayer. I would like us to read Romans chapter 8 and just see the assurance that God gives us in this time. What does Romans 8, 28 say? And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Many a times when we read this scripture, when we think that all things work for good, we only want the good things to work for us, to bring out the good. But you know what? Even the bad situations, God will still use them and convert them to be testimonies. This uh, situation most of us are in, the COVID situation, it seems like there's no hope. And many of us are feeling like, where is God in this? What is God doing about this? Let me tell you, God is not surprised at this. He's just wondering, why are you running up and down like someone who has no focus, someone who has no clue where they are going or heading to? God is very much aware and he will use this situation to bring out great and good out of it. So let us see God as one who is working behind the scenes. Just because you don't feel him, it doesn't mean that he's not there. Just because you can't see him, it doesn't mean that he's not there. Just because you feel all around you is darkness, it doesn't mean that God is not there. God is very much 
aware of what is going on. He's very much in the situation. He's very much in the details of what is happening. Sometimes we think the devil has won. But you know what? The devil is working for God. He's helping God complete his purpose. Just that he thinks he's, he's doing his own agenda, but he's actually uh, employed at this particular time by God. And uh, he's helping us as his children to be stronger and better in due course. Let us look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 7 to 8 and see what it says. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Not ashamed of the gospel, therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. We see in this uh, passage, uh, Paul just uh, encouraging us. And we know Paul went through a lot of persecution in his time. But we are being encouraged that we should not have uh, a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Uh, let me break this down a little bit for us to be able to see. When God talks of uh, a spirit of power, what does that mean? When we are told to have that spirit of power, we are being asked to have a spirit that will enable us to overcome the obstacle that are in our way. Hence, we need to have that power. And the Spirit of God enables us to have the power to be able to overcome the obstacles in our way. Spirit of love, what does that mean for us? When we are able to love or have that spirit of love, we are able to show uh, the character of God to others and um, bring God closer to others through love. And then finally, when it says a sound mind, what does that mean? It means we are in a frame or in a, in a state of mind, we are able to make the right kind of judgment and the right decisions where we are at. So when we are told not to have that spirit of fear, we, we have already been empowered to be in that position, to have that mind uh, that is of, of uh, proper judgment, uh, to show the character of God, and to be able to overcome obstacles in our way. As we go through this, uh, let, let's look at also John chapter 16, verse 33, what uh, John has to tell us. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. Other translations say trouble. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Here Jesus is encouraging us that uh, there's so much that is going on in the world. And right now, for sure, there's so much that is going on in the world. Especially with this situation of covid People have lost their jobs. Uh, people have lost loved ones. People are looking left, right, and center for options and solutions because they do not know what to do. But Jesus is telling us he has overcome. And you know what? He who is in us is greater than he that is in the world. If we have the overcomer with us, what does that mean? We too are overcomers. So we can overcome. Let's hang on to his word. Let's hang on to, on to this promise and know that we can make it in life. Um, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 talks of a time for everything. Uh, there's a season for everything. It's unfortunate the season that we are in now. Let me just read. I'll read uh, the first uh, verse of uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. But in your time, please read 1 uh, through verses 8. Of the same. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the sun. We're in this season where um, there's curfew, there's limited time for us, we can only work within a stipulated time. That doesn't mean life stops, life still continues. And uh, we can also uh, maybe just take from the story of uh, Moses 
with the children of Israel when he wanted them to leave Egypt. And they were told at a particular time they need to be in the house because an angel of death will be coming and he'll be coming to take firstborns. We see curfew is not a new, a new game changer to us. It was there. And many more other scenarios in the Bible, you can actually see there was curfew. People were expected to be in their houses at a particular time. We have the same here. Life has to continue. And if we adhere to those regulations, then we will be safe. Our firstborns will not be eliminated because we obeyed the rules and regulations that are there. So let us know that this is a season not there to last, but for a moment for a time. It will also come to pass. One of the things I, I normally like about the Old Testament, um, it always says, and it came to pass. And it came to pass. Meaning, it's in the past. This situation, we can also say, it will come to pass. At a later day, we'll all be celebrating and smiling. Despite the pain, despite the suffering, and the fear that it brought into us, it shall come to pass as well. Before I wrap up this, um, i like uh, to share this promise of God. And it says, I will never leave nor forsake you. We go through so much and we wonder, is God really there? Sometimes we don't have to wonder whether he's there. We don't really have to look for him. All you have to do is hang on to his promise. And he says, he will never leave no forsake us. God is here with us. In fact, what I realized is when we feel God has distanced himself from us, I, I take a check and ask myself, where has God gone? And I realized it is, not gone, it is not God who has gone away from me. I am the one who has pulled away from God. And what I need to do is retrace back my steps and find where did I lose God in all this? Where did I leave God behind? Because he has said in his word, he will never leave nor forsake us. Then there's something wrong with this picture. It is not God. It is me. I need to have a check. So you who is out there, when you're feeling like God is not there, please just retrace back your steps and ask yourself, where did I leave God? Because he said he will never leave. And God keeps his word. Let me finish by this uh, scripture. Psalm 119 verse 50. And it says, My comfort in my suffering is this. Your promise preserves my life. I think we have seen this promise that God has said he will never leave nor forsake us. Let us hang on to that promise because according to some, it preserves life. Let us hold on to this preservation of life. And what is that? Holding on to God's promises. There are so many promises of God in the Bible. God loves us so much that he sent his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And that is what it's all about. It's a promise. He did it for you. Let us trust in him that he's here with us even when you don't feel him. Let us continue pushing on and may the God of peace, the God of comfort, God of salvation, God of mercy be with you. Continue trusting in him. Continue looking up to him. That is where our help comes from. There's no better help than the help the Lord gives us. Know that this season is a season of growth, is a season of being developed, is a season of pushing forward, no matter how hard or how tough it is. Let us keep marching and moving forward. And the Lord will heal our pain and our suffering. God bless and see you next time. Amen. Let us pray and uh, just thank God for what he has done for us. Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you. And we bless you, Jesus, for who you are and what you have been in our lives. We give you glory and honor, and we thank you that, Lord God, you understand our pain. You understand our suffering. You understand our dilemma. 
And in all this, you do not condemn us. Father, we have left you. We have gone to look for solutions elsewhere. Forgive us for those moments, Father, we abandoned you. Your word has told us you will never leave nor forsake us. Father, many a times we leave you and we move on and go and do our own things. Father, we begin afresh with you. We trust in you and our hope is in you. You remain faithful even when we are faithless. Father, you do not shift gold, uh, you do not shift goalposts as some of us do. When things seem tough this side, we want to try the other side. Father, we pray that we will be strong. We will not be shaken even in these times of troubles, times of tribulation. And we thank you for your grace that is sufficient for each and every one of us. We we'll give you glory and honor and we bless your holy name. Be with us even in this week as we begin. Walk with each and every one of us, Father. And I pray for strength and for courage for those who need it, Father, to pull through this coming week. In Jesus' name we pray, trusting and believing. Amen. Bye-bye. God bless.